I have lived in this house for six years and only now thought about putting a bookshelf here. This time we are going to start at the beginning using Autodesk Inventor 2017 to design and then build it. We'll also throw in some modeling tutorials along the way. We will get started with parameters for the bookshelf. I already created a simple block with arbitrary dimensions for this tutorial. Most of you should be familiar with the parameters dialog box. The dialog box can be opened by using the funny looking FX in the quick access toolbar or can also be found under the manage tab. For the context of this video we will only be looking at five columns. The model parameters, the unit type, the equation, and the comment. Much more detail will come later. The model parameter in column 1 is the name that is applied when a dimension is created. The unit type in column 2 is the unit of measurement that applies to the dimension. The equation, of course, is the value of the parameter. The comment in the last column is a text field where you can put a note. The last one of interest here is the export parameter column that is to the left of the comment. There is also the ability to add a user-defined parameter that can be used in any equation. So what's the big deal? How do I use these parameters to my advantage during the design process? You may not know that you can link an Excel file to be used as parameters, keeping much of the designed dimensions in a single file. This file can be shared across multiple parts and or assemblies. And this is where I start on a new design. Here is my new Excel file ready to populate with data needed for my new bookcase. The top row headings are there for reference only and will be overwritten. The criteria for my bookcase will be length, height, depth, thickness of frame, thickness of shelves, Dado depth, number of shelves, and foot depth. Now we will add comments that will show up in the Inventor Parameters dialog box. Once I believe I have all of the parameters in place, I will go back and add the values and unit of measurement. Now that I have my parameter file, I will create a blank part file that will be used as a template for all of the components in the project. For this project, all parts will be from a board or sheet, so I also create a board with arbitrary dimensions to be modified when I create the actual part. First, I select the project file I had previously created. Then I pick the starting template, in this case one I have based on wooden material. Create a two-point center rectangle, add dimensions, extrude it and now to link to the parameter file. Open the parameters, tick the link button at the bottom left, select Excel files, Browse to the parameter file and select it. Now we see all of the values are there to apply to my parts. Tick the Done button at the bottom right and save the part. Now I will copy this file to my Templates folder. If you do not know where that is, then open Options, then the File tab. Your Templates folder is in the default template. Now for a Windows trick. Copy the path to your clipboard and then press the key combination, Windows key R, then paste the path and press Enter to open the folder. Now I can create new parts based on this template. The template will be deleted from my Templates folder when this project is completed.
Now it's time to start making some parts. First I create a new model based on the template that was created for this project. Now I open up the parameters and assign the dimensions. Note that there is a checkbox at the bottom for immediate update. With this box checked you can watch the model change as dimensions are updated. Now the model of the side is ready to machine to accept the shelves and top. First I throw in a rabbit for the top and dimension it to the thickness of the shelves, then extrude it to the dimension of the dado. While building a part, I typically name each process as I go along. Now adding the dado for the bottom shelf. At this point in the design, I do not know how many shelves I want and will need to see it as an assembled model. Now I'm going to create a model of the shelf. First, I save this part. Then instead of starting from scratch, I save it again as a new name and then modify the parameters. Another Windows trick. In the greater majority of applications, the key combination Alt F A executes a save as command. But what you can't see here is me pressing the keys. I delete the dado and rabbit, then modify the D0 parameter from height to length. But were you paying attention? Do you see what is wrong with that? The length is not going to be correct. As defined by this project, the length parameter is a dimension from the outside face of one side to the outside face of the other. Before correcting this, we're going to assemble the model. I start a new assembly, then open my project folder and drag and drop the side and shelf into the assembly. Then constrain them as needed. Constrain the end made to the bottom of the rabbit, edge flush to edge, and top flush to top. Add another shelf and side by copy and paste, then constrain the two new parts. Since this ended up at an odd viewing angle, I'm going to reset the view cube so that the home view is how I want it. I want the top to be a different part than the shelves in case it needs to be altered later without affecting the shelves. Under the Productivity tab, there is a Save and Replace function. Click it and give it a new name and you can see that we've added a new part. Referring back to my parameters, I had determined that the length must be 26 inches. We can see here it is 27.167 inches and this is because the length of the shelves is wrong and now it is time to go back and correct it. Open the shelf and then the parameters. Parameter D0 is the length of the shelf. We're going to throw a simple formula in there so that Inventor will calculate that dimension to make it conform to the design parameters. The formula for this dimension is the length minus the thickness of the two sides plus the dados on both sides. Getting back to the assembly, now you can see it is exactly 26 inches. Now for you to see the magic of using linked design parameters. Now to answer the big question as to why to link files at design time. Opening the spreadsheet and changing one of the design parameters and all parts will update to match the new design parameters. For this simple example, we're going to change the thickness of the sides and the depth of the rabbit. I change the shade of the shelf to easily see what happens. Notice that the update icon on the quick access toolbar lights up when I save the spreadsheet. Inventor monitors the spreadsheet for any changes. 
Now click the icon to force an update and see the parts changed, but we are still at the design parameters of 26 inches. I have designed and built larger cabinet with drawers and all is linked to the design parameter spreadsheet. A change in the spreadsheet results in updating all of the affected parts. Now to change it back and decide how many shelves I want. The easiest way to do this is to create an array of the bottom shelf. Select the bottom, define the direction, put in the number of iterations, and put in a unique spacing value that will be easy to find. I use the bottom for the array because it's an actual shelf and leaves me free to change the design of the top without affecting the shelves. Plan for the future and you can save some headaches. Now that I have the array created, it is time to decide how many shelves I want. Reviewing where I'm going to put it and what I'm going to put on it, I decided I want four shelves, so now we need some more math. Need a formula for the distance from the bottom shelf to the top to determine the spacing needed to have the shelves centered and equally spaced between them. Remember this number. I will add a user parameter but first I need to link the assembly to the spreadsheet. The formula for the distance from the bottom to top is height minus foot minus shelf thickness times two. Now to validate that that is correct. Remembering the distance was 38.083, you can see it is right on target, so now divide by the number of shelves. Now the shelf is centered between the top and bottom. If you recall, when I created the design parameters, I only put in two shelves, and this needs to be updated. Open the spreadsheet, change the number of shelves from two to four, and then save. Back to the assembly and tick the local update icon, and now I have four shelves that are equally spaced between the top and bottom. This formula will also be used in the array to create the dados in the sides. Based on that, the formula is at the wrong level. A formula should be placed in a lower level part of an assembly and then shared with the assembly. This way, if you copy this part to another project, then the formula will come along with it. Now to fix this mistake. Another alternative is to put the formula in the design parameter spreadsheet. The drawback of putting it in the spreadsheet is that the formula will have cell names instead of readable names, making it a little bit harder to keep track of. We're going to make a rectangular array of the bottom dado for the shelves. Using the rectangular pattern tool, select the dado, assign the direction, and just accept the default values. Go back to the assembly and copy the formula from the assembly to the side and then change the number of dados to the linked value. Now the number of dados and spacing match the shelves but there is a potential conflict because the same formula is now in two places. This is a poor practice because if you find you have to make a change then you have to go find all of the other locations. So we'll go back to the side and share that formula, then add that share to the assembly. Open the side, and then the parameters. On the row that has the formula, we tick the box where it says export parameter and give it a name so that we know what it is when referred to in other models. Back to the parameters in the assembly. Tick the link button and change to inventor files, then select the side model. This dialog box shows you all dimensions in the model that was selected. The little green arrow over the X indicates dimensions that have already been shared, but you can also force a dimension to be shared from here by clicking on the gray circle with a line through it. Clicking the gray circle, it turns to a yellow circle with the plus sign, which is indicating that it is shared in the current open model. Now I will replace the referenced formula with the one from the shared model and delete the user parameter. 
There it is. The basic bookcase design is completed, but I think I'll add something just to spice it up a bit. I will put a board with a complex curve underneath the bottom shelf. When creating the new part, I now have a new material thickness that is called out, but it is not part of the design parameters, and we need to fix that. Open the parameters file and add a row. Now back to the model and you see we have the new value. Throw in some arcs and arbitrary dimensions, extrude and save. Then add it to the assembly. The design is now complete, but I will review one more time before buying some wood and making sawdust. Subscribe to be notified when the video of making this bookcase has been completed.